So what is noise power in communication systems? And there's a lot of confusion about this. Most textbooks will tell you that the noise is white noise and they'll show you a power spectral density which is flat. So uh, this is the power spectral density for noise and they'll give it, label it as n naught divided by 2. Okay, so this means that equal, there are equal components of all, freq <coughs> all frequencies in the noise. Now, what does this mean for uh, autocorrelation about it being independent uh, noise? Well, if we take the inverse Fourier transform, we get the autocorrelation function for the noise, uh, and the in autocorrelation function, R in Tor, is the expected value of noise at time t times noise at time t plus Tor. And the inverse Fourier transform of this gives you a delta function at zero. Uh, and so what this says is that there is zero correlation. So when these multiply by each other and you take the expected value, there's no correlation for any value of Tor, so for any time offset, other than Tor equals zero, uh, which is when you get the power of the noise. Okay, so this being a delta function, uh, it's intuitive then that the noise is independent because different noises at different times have zero correlation. Okay, so this is uh, intuitive and, and uh, makes sense, but what does it mean in terms of the noise power, the noise power? Because that's important for signal to noise ratios. Well, to get to that, I'd first of all like to think about the bandwidth limited case. So on the right hand side, I'm going to draw these with band limitations. So on the right hand side, uh, we're going to have the noise after it's gone through a band pass or low pass filter in this case where there's a bandwidth limitation. Okay, so let me label this here as being a W, bandwidth of W, and this is minus W. This is in the frequency domain. So now the noise power spectral density under bandwidth constrained uh, looks like this. It's flat across the spectrum of interest, but it's zero outside that spectrum. Now, how did we get that? Well, we took our noise over here that was unconstrained in the bandwidth, and we put that noise through a low pass filter. And what that means is, is that we have this noise going into a filter and coming out with this spectrum. And that's an important concept to be remembering, that this has come about by putting this noise into a low pass filter and looking at the output of that filter. And that filter occurs, we do that in the receiver of a communication system. So now we can see the autocorrelation function for this noise. And again, you can take the inverse Fourier transform yourself to find this, but the inverse Fourier transform of this noise is a function that looks like this. So it's a, uh, a function, a sync function, uh, and, and it should be familiar to you, the Fourier transform pairs of a, of a square is a sink. Uh, and let me put the, the values in here. So this first crossing point here is 1 divided by 2w. Uh, the second crossing point here is 1 divided by w. Uh, and the, the third point and so on, uh, this is here uh, 3 divided by 2w and so on. And this is in the Tor uh, dimension here, uh, the, for Tor. Okay, so, and the height here, importantly, the height here is n naught times w. So this is in the band limited case uh, on the right hand side. So this is band limited and on the left hand side, band limited, and on the left hand side was unconstrained. I'm just going to write that unconstrained bandwidth. Okay, now let's look at what on the right hand side. Okay, so what about the noise power now? We asked ourselves about the noise power over here, and I'll come back to that, but let's look at the noise power over here. So the noise power is sigma squared, and this is what you see in textbooks when you're looking at bit error rates, for example, and this equals the expected value of noise squared. That's the noise power. That's the definition of noise power. So this also equals the autocorrelation function at zero. Okay, and in this case, it's well defined as being, in the band limited case, it's well defined as being n naught times w. Okay, so, uh, and this is the noise power, and the noise is uh, Gaussian noise. 
So this noise here had this spectral density, but it's Gaussian in its probability distribution. Okay, so this is the variance, sigma squared, the variance of a Gaussian at the output of the filter which filtered the noise. And that's always important to be remembering. So the signal to noise ratio here, if we were to write the signal to noise ratio in this case, it's the power of the signal divided by the power of the noise, which is n naught times w. So if you're defining signal to noise ratio, this is the definition in the band limited case. So let's look back now to the unconstrained case. And often textbooks in digital communications and other communications, analog communications and so on, often they start with the unconstrained case and they often derive things like matched filters and so on without considering the bandwidth limitations. And they do that because it's simpler to derive things in that case. But they're, they're doing something without telling you uh, if that's what they're doing because they often say that the power of the noise is n naught divided by 2. Now why do they say that? Well, let's, let's look first of all at what this power is telling us. So in the unconstrained case, the power of the noise, uh, which equals Rn at 0, in this case is the height of this delta function. Well, the delta function gets labelled with n naught on 2 because that's what you get if you do the inverse Fourier transform, but that is not the height of the delta function. If you remember from uh, knowledge of signals and systems, and if you're not familiar with this, there's a link in the information below this video, the height of a delta function at 0 is infinity. So the, the n naught and 2 represents the area under the delta function because it's infinitely narrow but infinitely high. So the noise power in this unconstrained bandwidth case is actually infinity. So that means the SNR is a little bit hard to think about, a little bit ill-defined. And of course it makes sense that it's the power's infinity because if you take the area under the power spectral density, you get infinity because this straight line goes out to infinity. So what is the signal to noise ratio that they're talking about in the textbooks when they are talking in the unconstrained bandwidth case when they're doing things like derivations of match filters? Well, like I say, mostly, I'll just draw a line over here, mostly they tell you that sigma squared equals n naught divided by 2. So in this case, they're not really touching on the bandwidth limitations, they kind of ignore that or, or gloss over that, but what what could they be saying? Well, one thing they could be saying is it either applies to a situation where w equals one half. So if so, this could apply. So this applies. This applies if and we can see this here now. So if w uh, over here, if w equals a half, a half a hertz, then this would apply. So that what they're telling you is they tell you that this is the power that, that they're going to be assuming in their derivation. So therefore, it could either apply to the band limited case when w equals a half a hertz. And in this case, I've pl plotted w here. So the, across the full bandwidth, if you, for example, moved it up to pass band, which is often the case, uh, then you would have one hertz across. But this is half a hertz defined like this. Okay, another part of it of this assumption though, we, this would be that this is constrained with the signal that you're sending. So the signal that you're sending that has this power that is going to be received in noise, this would have to be contained within W. So, so this is uh, one, one uh, assumption. It could be that they're not telling you about the bandwidth constraint, but implicitly they are requiring a bandwidth constraint, as you can see here, because by defining this, one interpretation would be that w equals a half, and therefore there's a band that you, that's implying there's a band or a low pass filter at the receiver, and that would imply that your signal has to fit within that low pass filter. So that's one situation where that derivation would apply. But another one would be uh, a case where the signal power scales with bandwidth. So I'll just write down here, signal power uh, scales with bandwidth. And what do I mean by that? Signals power scales with W. What do I mean by that? Well, the power of the signal, this power in the signal to noise ratio, if that equaled power per hertz of bandwidth times W, so if the power in the signal actually equaled some constant power which you're going to scale with W, so as W increases, you have more overall power in your signal, uh, then, oh, in fact, sorry, 2W, 
so power in the signals times 2w, then you would have the same scenario where the signal, the noise power equaled n naught divided by 2 would correspond to this same SNR over here uh, when you've got that power defined in this way. And that would allow you to have different values of w, not just a half, it would have different values of w and you would still be able to have this signal to noise ratio uh, matching up with the sigma squared equals n naught on 2. So these are two different scenarios. And just one final point to make uh, is that the factor of two here, uh, there's sometimes you see a factor of two in the signal to noise ratio uh, formulas, and that can, that can easily, you can see that can easily come about or, or disappear depending on your definition of W. So like I said before, if I define this to be W on two, and this to be minus W on two, then the bandwidth across here would be W, in which case uh, these twos here would disappear uh, and you would have some other twos appearing uh, and you can work that through by simply replacing w by w divided by two and that's sometimes done in some textbooks. So if this has helped you to understand a bit more about noise power uh, and the derivations that you see and the formulas that you see in textbooks, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the channel. There's going to be another video coming on the relationship between sigma squared and the SNR and the bit error rate in the case of match filters. So keep an eye out for that video as well. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And check out the web page in the link in the details below where you'll find a full categorized list of all the videos on the channel.